Uh, how you doing, guys? Um, now, this uh, screencast of the software is not really for Final Cut Pro 10. Um, I'm kind of going to show you how you can export it out to a regular movie file. And this screencast is primarily for Compressor 4. Um, you can... Uh, let me give an example. Um, Compressor 4 is really an add-on program to uh, Final Cut Pro 10. You can still export it from Final Cut Pro 10 without using Compressor 4. Uh, but it is uh, a bit limited in what it can do, and I'll uh, show you here. Uh, if you go to the Share menu right here, um, you can actually export it different ways. You can actually also do it straight to YouTube, Facebook, video sharing sites. Um, reportedly, it's uh, people say it's actually a slower way of doing it. It's easier to export it as a file and upload it yourself. Uh, this, you know, some of the things I've heard. Uh, obviously, you can do a DVD and Blu-ray. Yeah, you don't have any menus for that. It's just straight uh, to play on a DVD and Blu-ray player. Now, if you just want to export it to a regular movie file, you can do that, export media. Uh, if you don't want to do any of, uh, of the above. And uh, this is actually where it, um, it's kind of limiting what you can do. And uh, obviously, uh, we're going to export as a video, audio, uh, video and audio file. And uh, here we can choose how to ex export it. And it is kind of limited in Apple ProRes. Now, I use Apple ProRes as the primarily way to edit, which is an editing format for Final Cut Pro 10, which I normally, that's the file format I edited it in, so I import it as a ProRes. And uh, for you guys that may not know, ProRes is very large file sizes. Um, depending on the length of the movie files, you know, it, it goes, you know, it could be as much as 80 gigabytes just for, you know, one video. Uh, normally, I think mine are around 27 uh, by the time I import it. So as you can see, it's going to be very large. So you, to me, you know... Exporting it as Apple ProRes is not going to cut it for me. Uh, even when I use uh, H.264, um, I usually normally do about an 8 or 10 minute news video. Um, it still ends up being like 7 or 8 gigabytes, which is still way too large to upload to YouTube and um, even put it on a DVD, even though Blu-ray probably would work. But um, So... Like I said, that, that's kind of limiting, so it's for you guys that are thinking of getting a Final Cut Pro 10, you might want to think about getting Compressor 4 because you're going to have a lot more options. And uh, we're going to take a look at that now. So uh, here I already have a finished um, news clip. And this has been done, you know, much earlier, but it, uh, I still have it imported into Final Cut Pro 10. Uh, so what you can do to go to Compressor is uh, go to your share menu and go to send to compressor and it'll just strictly import it into compressor 4 and this is what I really want you guys to look at and um, if you look on the left hand side uh, I could expand that out for you but um, now look at the top left hand side you'll see um, looks like one of those um, clipboards that you know you hit during the you know the beginning of the movie um, that's actually the file itself um, you can actually just open compressor 4 by itself and put a move of fi movie file by dropping and dragging also but we just selected um, send to compressor and uh, down here uh, lower left hand side um, Okay, you got two tabs. Um, one is settings, the other one's destinations. And uh, okay, settings. This is where you get all your presets. And uh, and let me expand some of these. Okay, uh, you can export as uh, Apple devices. Um, and you got different quality, standard definition, high definition. Could be Apple TV, iPad, iPhone. 
strictly to a audio podcast. If you just want the uh, audio. Uh, I guess you got disk burning. Uh, you can actually stream this live. HTTP. Motion graphics. Um, MPEG. Format. I guess MPEG 2, MPEG 1. Okay, I guess you got podcasting. For Apple device. Um, ProRes. I guess you can export it back to ProRes again. Now, I normally use, um, which is called video sharing services. And these are probably the most useful right here. And uh, of course we got H uh, 1080p HD, 720p HD, uh, large 540p standard definition, and video sharing is the smallest uh, file size. I normally use 720p, that's what I record in, so that's the one I normally use, and I'm going to show you that. I'm going to do that. And, uh, well, actually first, um, now I do 60 frames a minute when it, uh, or 60 frames a second when I record. Now I can't, when I render it, I, I, you know, it actually goes to the default, which is 60 frames per second. When I put it on YouTube, the video doesn't work out very well, the frame rate. So I got to set it down to 30 frames a second. So I actually got to go here and, uh, Go into video. Oops, now it's being stingy. Okay, this is the same one. I'll, I'll click on this one. And, which is actually the same settings, except I got it uh, 80 frames a second. And right here, it normally defaults to 60. And then I just uh, switch it to 29.97. Okay, those are your, my primary formats that I use. Now... These custom settings, um, now these default settings you can't delete, which is good because you want to save those. I just change it in here and I save it as a preset, which actually comes down here, which is custom. I've got two um, 720p HD and large 540p, those are the two. So all you got to do is take your preset and you just drag it up here. Uh, drag settings and destinations right there. And I'll just take a second. And we're getting the spinning beach ball of death. Oh, that's not good. Okay, there you uh, go. It took a while. And uh, here we're showing uh, HD 720p and that's the all the settings for that. Now you still have to select the source of where you're going to render it to. And we're going to go back down here to settings and you can choose destinations. Um, it's kind of also presets just like settings. Um, and here's some for Apple. Um, cluster storage, desktop. Obviously it goes right to the desktop and you put it where you want it from there. Source and uh, user movies files. And you can also edit these as custom presets as well and I've already got one down here which is um, it actually goes to my movie hard drive uh, that I put my downloads and on my recorded video and you're just gonna uh, drag and drop it up towards source and it goes right there and as you can see now we got the uh, source copy right there going to hard drive number two and uh, and all I got to do is click submit right here and it will go ahead and render it to my uh, second hard drive just like that. Um, uh, it's also pretty powerful too because um, if you look up toward the top Apple QMaster from here um, not only can you render it here locally you can actually set it up as a uh, cluster with other Apple computers so um, you can utilize this through a network. So uh, instead of the one computer doing all the rendering and compressing, you can use them all together uh, for load sharing, which is going to be done uh, a lot more quicker. Uh, another nice thing about this is, um, compared to other compression software, is you can do 
more than one instance. Um, so I can actually set up uh, if I want to do a HD 720 just like I do now and let's say I also want to do a 1080p and I can drag that on top of that one uh, just right here select my source as well um, and uh, obviously submit and I can make all those files at once I mean obviously they take longer and uh, a uh, few things, uh, let me finish out the video, tell you a few things about um, Compressor 4. Uh, when the Final Cut Pro 10 came out, um, Compressor 4 was rewritten. Uh, it looks like it has almost the same interface as the old version of Compressor. Um, I'm not sure all the changes because I've never used Compressor 4 before. Um, but... Um, this version, uh, I've noticed, um, Final Cut Pro 10 doesn't really give me much problems, even though it's new, uh, software and it's considered really, um, I'm not saying beta software, but it, it's still, since it's a totally new rewrite, um, you know, you, I'd figure it'd be a lot more buggy, but, um, Final Cut Pro 10 hasn't given me any problems, hardly at all. It's actually compressor, uh, that gets me a, a, bit, of tr a bit of trouble. Um, now usually it's after, usually it's after it's done. Um, often when I try to close out compressor, it won't close out. Um, so actually I have to force quit from the force quit menu. And, uh, it still leaves actually compressor in memory. So often I have to go in there and, uh, take it out from memory using the, uh, I'm trying to think of that stupid program now. Um, activity monitor. Uh, Windows has uh, something similar where you can quit programs still running in memory. So, um, on the most part, it's still uh, very powerful what you can do with it. Um, so, if you're thinking of getting uh, Final Cut Pro 10, uh, you might want to think about getting compressor as well.